Seven months ago, I asked my viewers to send in questions for a Q&A session, and I wanted to celebrate 60,000 subscribers. And you might say 60,000, that's a mighty arbitrary number, and that's true. But the idea behind it was to celebrate that the second half, the second 30,000 subscribers took about three months, while the first 30K took about three years to reach. So you guys sent me a lot of questions, and we're going to answer them all in this video. A lot of the questions that came up, and this is no surprise because the channel is heavily focused on helping you to improve your painting and helping you to be happy with your painting. So a lot of the questions were general painting questions, but a lot of you also asked me questions about my own painting. How did it develop? Where did I have problems in the beginning? Which techniques do I like? Which techniques do I not like? And then there is a handful of questions that I would call professional questions. So what's the goal with the channel? What is the future of the channel? And other related questions. And it would not make sense to timestamp every single one of these questions. So I clustered them together and I made little chapters for you to click on in the YouTube timeline down here. So I have a cup of coffee and we're going to just go through all of these questions. And I hope you're going to find them interesting. So let me bring up my list that I made seven months ago. Oh, good job. I did not note down who asked this question. So sorry about that. But there's a lot of good ones and also some that are not that easy to answer, but I'll try to make it short. So the first question is, what technique did you have troubles with at the beginning of your painting journey? And what technique do you have difficulties with presently? Oh boy. If you are following my channel, you have heard me say this probably uh, maybe in one of my live streams. I don't necessarily think in techniques. I know that it is really convenient for beginners to learn um, painting step by step. And I also teach it step by step. So it makes sense to talk about techniques like edge highlighting, uh, stippling and so on. Uh, but this is to, to break down the larger body of what it is about to learn miniature painting into more easily digestible topics uh, and more accessible topics so that you can learn them step by step. But I, when I paint, I don't necessarily think in techniques anymore. And I think stepping away from thinking in techniques has helped me the most because when you want to apply a technique and then you stipple some paint on, and then it's not really what you wanted it to be. So what should you do next and knowing what you can do next to adapt um, the start that you did with stippling to what your goal should be. So maybe you need to dilute your paint a bit more and uh, glaze over this. And is it then stippling or is it glazing or a mix of both? How do you call the mix of both? That has helped me a lot. So not thinking in techniques, but thinking in what does my paint consistency have to be in the exact moment? How do I hold my brush or how do I have to hold my brush? How do I need to move my brush and all of these aspects to get to a goal that I have in mind. And uh, this has helped me a lot and this has improved my painting so much. And it was difficult to break out of thinking in techniques and just thinking in this, but it was a gradual process. Once you paint a lot, you encounter these <laughs> tricky situations that are not solvable with a tool set of technique A, technique B, technique C, but you have to blend it all together and find your own solutions. And I think that's really exciting about painting. And I think this is what I have the most fun personally with. So I can't really answer what technique it is that I have problems with at present. But one thing that I want to improve in my painting is that I want to add more color variety, um, making my results, my paint jobs a bit more vivid, a bit more interesting to look at and making my style a bit more unique. I feel like my style is a bit too tame. Maybe I want to bring out the wildest side a bit. I don't know. What a miniature painting is most fun to you and why? Are there boring parts? If so, how do you get through the boring parts and get to the fun bits? So I think a good way to explain what is the most fun for me in painting is to start with the question that I get a lot. Why don't you use 
a lot more oil paints. And the answer to this is that oil paints can get great results, but I don't necessarily like the approach. It's not an in the moment approach. You do something and then you have to wait um, until it's dry, until you can continue. And I just prefer to be able to slap paint on a miniature, sketch um, a light situation, yeah, see the miniature develop within a reasonable time frame, so just a short amount of time, and then develop this initial sketch and yeah, just have fun with it. And to me, this is a bit more of an in the moment thing, and I'm not necessarily hung up on the result. I just want to have fun creating this thing in front of me. So for me, it's definitely the journey. So the process of painting is what is most fun for me. I guess we can just say any hurdle <laughs> in front of that uh, before I can start slapping on paint is really annoying and that is assembling, mold line cleaning, gap filling, base coating. All of this is really tedious but I think I'm not alone in this so this is probably the answer that a lot of people give but it is what it is. So how do I get through them? I just force myself to do it and I don't want to paint anything that has mold lines or that has gaps and it's a bit of a, an OCD thing. I just have to get rid of, of all of these before I start. So there's a, a bit of a phase where I'm not happy with painting, but yeah. Okay, this is a bit of more of a complicated question. So let's start with the simple one and then do the, the progressive ones. How do you define your painting style? And when did you realize the style? Like I said earlier, I want to have fun with painting and I don't want to necessarily take too long. Um, I still want to paint to a higher standard or what could be considered to be a higher standard, but I don't want it to take too long. So I have always tried to achieve the best results in a reasonable amount of time. Back when I was painting a lot more for Golden Demons and competitions, uh, everything took a lot more time. Today, I prefer a bit more of a sketching style and I like to focus on contrast and not so much on smoothness, which made me a lot happier as a painter. So I would consider it a sketching style. And this also answers the question of how has my style developed? Um, I think I became a bit more of a expressionistic painter instead of just trying to be super tame and getting everything smooth and yeah, just making sure I don't make a mistake. And today I think um, mistakes often lead to something interesting and you can build on mistakes. And if something is too perfect, that can look boring. And I just want to avoid that. You recently covered your creative process. Is it different depending on what you paint for display versus tabletop versus competition? I don't think it's that different. Like I said, I do an initial sketch very often and then I just start refining and I found that for tabletop, you can get away with just sketching because it already creates the initial contrast and light and shadow situation. And like I said, I feel like when you put a miniature in front of you and you put it at tabletop length away from you, I find this style is interesting already. And when I move to display painting, I just really only refine these sketches. So I go over the initial um, more opaque layers with glazes and smooth everything out. And then even for competition uh, painting, I just try to minimize the error. So maybe I start with a bit more of a controlled sketch in the beginning and try to minimize the uh, cleaning up I have to do, but it doesn't necessarily change a lot. The one thing you believe that if anyone will do or stop doing will change their point of view about miniature painting for the good. Uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but just stop thinking in, in techniques and just do what you need in the moment. Uh, it's the best advice that I have to give. Other than that, just try having fun and, and don't think about what other people think about your miniatures. It's not going to put you in a happy place. Uh, you're going to constantly feel the pressure of trying to achieve that outside validation. Just paint for yourself and even if some aspects of your painting are not conforming with lore or, uh, you know, the um, actually guys that know all the backstories and how this space marine has to be painted. Just do whatever you feel like is right and what feels right to you and what's fun to you because it's your miniatures and you have to look at them and not anyone else. How do you plan for painting a miniature? Do you have a process around 
gathering inspiration, setting out timelines or setting staged goals for completing the model. Oh, I, I'm not organized at all. I don't have any goals, no timelines. I don't plan anything anymore at least. Um, so if I do a competition piece, what happens is I get hung up. I get caught up in trying to plan out everything perfectly. And this can take ages. So I start with the diameter of the base uh, and how the composition will work. And then I draw a sketch and then I redraw the sketch and I position the, the figures if it's like a duo or something like that. Um, I get, I plan everything out, but it's not a pleasant thing. Uh, it, it's stressful f to me because I can just slap stuff on and just have fun with it, like I said. So I guess that's the difference between when I really want to try and win at the competition or just try to do well in a competition. So if I have a deadline, say I'm pinning for a competition, it really helps to write down what I still need to do so that I have a to-do list. Those are definitely the things I do. But yeah, I just like to not plan anything. I just have one idea in mind and then I just start and then whatever happens, happens. How do you deal with failure? If a technique doesn't work as expected, do you start all over or do you accept it, let it be an improve on your next model? I always try to fix mistakes on the model itself. So in a way, I never stopped at failure. I always tried to push beyond and to fix it. If that doesn't work, if you feel like the miniature is not savable, uh, honestly, just put it aside and do something else and maybe strip it. I don't think you should get caught up in something that you really don't enjoy doing anymore. And it's more like a chore to fix this. Just pick something else um, where you can have fun again. And sometimes just having these quote unquote failures in front of you, or you still have them to look at, can remind you of what didn't go well with this miniature. And you can try to not do this exact mistake again in, on your next miniature. Why do you paint? What do you get from the hobby? Are you doing it to try to relax, get away from stress? I'm not doing it to one day be able to win competitions, but I still want to be good. Yeah, so I think it's good to find your goal with painting and that goal can change over the years and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I got into it because I like the creative process and I kept with it because I felt like it could be something that I can be good at. And I feel like if you find something that you're good at and so for me, for a long time, it was trying to be really, really good at it and trying to be one of the best. Then eventually I lost the fun in all of this and I just stopped painting. And then when I picked it up again, I just painted for myself and I didn't even post on the internet for a few years. And I just tried to have fun with yeah painting and not necessarily having to finish a miniature so that I can post it on the internet or put it into an online competition. And yeah, really took away a lot of the stress that built up. And at that point, it became super relaxing again. Uh, yeah, and just something I could have fun with. And nowadays, it's a bit more stressful because I obviously uh, want to share um, my miniatures with you all. But it has become more of a thing where, of course, I need to finish something because I want to teach you how to get to a goal. So, of course... It doesn't make sense to just stop midway like I often did, like my cabinet over there shows. But that's fine because I don't feel judged in the end and I don't need to feel judged because the goal is already achieved when the miniature is finished because I showed you how to do something and I taught you something, hopefully. And it does not start when the miniature is finished, like with a competition, the actual purpose of the miniature only comes later, like to be judged. And I'm happy that this after process is not happening anymore. And uh, yeah, I can just have a finished miniature that already had a purpose. What plateaus did you hit in your painting journey and how did you get past them? So I always tried to progress and I think it was a rather linear process for me. I didn't ever hit any plateaus or at least I didn't know that I hit them because back then the internet wasn't that prevalent and um, you didn't see all these other people regularly that were super good. So nowadays I feel like some people have 
had a lot more time to develop their style. So I think the absolute top moved on a lot and I'm more like down here, but that's fine because my focus is a bit different. So I think that's a bit of a plateau at the moment, but I don't know if I necessarily need or want to bridge that. But the answer to the second half of the question is really simple. When you hit the plateau, you try to analyze what you have to do to go beyond it, and then you just do it. So in this case, it's probably um, practicing and trying new things. You say you have never stripped miniatures, why? <laughs> um, yeah, I mentioned it before. I'm fine with having something that I don't necessarily like 100% and to have it and to be able to look at it and to learn from these past mistakes. And also, I never bought anything off of eBay, for example, where it makes sense um, that if you want to repaint it and it's plastic with paint, uh, that you strip it. But I never did that. What makes you decide to instead cover up a less liked paint job? Um, yeah, I feel like... If it's not plastered, if the miniature is not plastered and you can see all the details still, like a couple of layers of paint are not going to ruin your miniature, uh, then you can just paint over it. It's as simple as that. Have you ever painted a miniature using cheap craft paints and what were the results when compared to premium miniature paints? I think craft paints are just for, you know, the memes. Uh, when you want to do a, a video, that's a bit of a challenge. I don't recommend using craft paints. It's almost like, why would you use brushes that are not good if you can use good brushes and not make it hard on you? Like um, craft paints don't necessarily have the pigment density that almost all of the actual miniature brands have. Um, yeah, why would you make it hard on yourself? I'm wondering, do you actually play Warhammer? If so, what army? I don't play, no. I never really had the time, even though it was tempting to build an army because a well-painted army on the table is really looking awesome. But well, I had so many other hobbies and um, I never got into playing because it's really time intense to also learn the rules and all of that. And I just preferred doing sports. And those two hobbies are really time intense already. And yeah, that's the main reason. If I was going to do an army, it would be Necrons, but I think that's already obvious. <laughs> What's it like winning a Golden Demon for the first time? So the first time winning a Golden Demon was really great because like for many of us, it was a childhood dream for me to just win one of these trophies. But then you kind of realize that there is a lot of other stuff attached to it, like uh, a lot of competitive thinking, at least back then in the 2000s, it was really competitive. And there's always a lot of discussion around why did this win and not this. And I probably was also guilty of that a couple of times. Yeah, that's why I say I really don't like my mindset when I'm in competition mode. And so I try to avoid it. But it's definitely great to have that statue. And I got really hooked on trying to win as many as I could. Um, but I'm kind of glad that's in the past. As much as a controlled chaos painting you do provide you with great outcomes, do you sometimes wish you were a more methodical painter? Yeah, especially when it's about golden demons. Nowadays you have to, to do a lot more of a methodical approach and um, ideally you never make a mistake. So starting off of controlled chaos already puts you in a less optimal position uh, to get to an end result that never has mistakes anymore. But um, otherwise, other than that, not really, no. Because like I already said, the way I paint is really fun to me and I don't want to necessarily paint any different. Uh, what's your workspace like? And what's your work routine? Like your painting posture, do you take breaks? So I think the workspace is really important and that's why I got a standing table. And uh, that doesn't mean I necessarily paint standing up all the time. But what I can do is adjust the height of the table, which means I can, you know, have a better posture because I can put my arms up in front of my face a bit better. And especially when streaming, um, it's really straining on the back and also while recording videos, obviously, because I want to show everything in big detail and uh, not obscure anything with my hands and uh, my head and so on. So I have to have a certain posture and being able to adjust your table to that posture is really a good thing. And I can only recommend if you can afford it and you have the space for it, 
Um, there's also smaller standing tables. So, you know, just to have a, a desktop that you can adjust in height so you can also straighten your back is really a good thing. As far as break times go, I always try to get up and behind that curtain, there's like a small gym where I can do exercises, especially for my back. I, I always like to strengthen my back as much as I can because I paint a lot and I still tend to hunch over. So I'm trying to work against that. Uh, it's really important, in my opinion, to keep a healthy back because our hobby is really straining and uh, putting a lot of pressure on our backs. Do you have a subject you find yourself have the most fun with painting or a subject you return to often, for example, painting robots or zombies? Um, yeah, I like undeads and vampires. I also like space marines. <laughs> and for my own range, I really like um, robots. I feel like robots have a lot to offer. You can tell a lot of stories with robots. You can make them soulless killing machines, but you can also try to create something interesting around robots that might be sentient. Um, there's a lot of stories to explore there. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to do my next sculpt, which will be some robots again. Do you get to paint much purely for your own fun anymore? Um, not really. I try to, to paint the things that I enjoy. Um, sometimes I get stuck a bit in chasing that next new release. But I tried to avoid it and instead of painting the, the minion box, what I am doing at the moment is I'm painting a Necron. But that one is also going to be on video. So uh, I just try to combine the two and I try to make videos about things that I really enjoy doing. Do you have any colors or color palettes that you tend to gravitate to more than others? I want to say greens and turquoises and turquoise and orange, but there was a time when I was painting purely green figures. And I think that's also why I like Nurgle. So greens and olive greens and pastel tones. Yeah, those, those are really the palettes that I like. And again, I think that's why I like Nurgle so much. <laughs> you spoke about OSL in your last video. Are there any other painting techniques you find overrated? And are there any that you feel deserve more attention? Yeah, so I said recently that I feel like there's too much OSL going on and everything is just lit in these extreme light situations. And, you know, like with non-metallic metal, people always said it's only good from one angle. And I feel like especially with uh, the, all the OSL going on, I feel like that has uh, been pushed to an extreme. And now it's really just purely painting for a picture because if you turn the miniature around and uh, it's really extremely lit from one side, then it's basically that one color from this side, right? And once you turn it like 90 degrees, uh, you see the, the two OSL sources and it makes sense. But if you look at it from that other angle, it's covered in light and colored light. And I don't know, I just don't like it, but that's just me, like it's personal preference, right? You can do whatever you want. Other techniques that I find overrated, I think senatal priming is really overrated. You don't need to do it for everything. Sure, it can give you an initial light sketch if you're not that experienced, but if you don't do anything with it, like if you don't use transparent paints with it and uh, you just cover it with opaque colors, it's not really necessary. Any painting techniques that need more attention? I'm not sure about that one. I always felt like there's such a variety of painters that do different things. Um, I just feel like there's always a bit of a flavor of the month going on. Like someone starts doing something extremely well and then everyone tries to do it. Like something in a video game that is gear dependent where everything tries to <laughs> build that uh, gear that the number one person in the rankings has. It has become a bit like that, I feel like. Yeah, again, that's fine. People should always paint the way they want to paint. If people have something they want to achieve and it's something where someone set an absolute record, as far as you can say that with painting, and they're trying to push themselves towards that, that's great, right? As long as they're having fun. Okay, we're moving into the more general painting questions. Um, these are all questions about how to achieve a goal and how to improve. So let's take a sip of coffee before we get into that. How do you practice and what do you practice? I always recommend people to try and do deliberate practice. And that means don't 
just start miniature after miniature and paint them from start to finish. And then in the middle, you're trying to practice something because you're spending a lot of time on things you already know how to. When instead you could take a couple of sculpts that maybe you don't like that much and you're just getting it to where you can get to practice what you want to practice. And then you do that, you try to achieve something um, you set a goal and then you just try to practice getting to that goal and then you put it away and then you do it again on another miniature. And that way you're not wasting the miniatures you really want to paint to practice, but you can also spend a lot more time on this exact thing that you want to get right. And what do you practice? I would just say anything you can identify as a step for you to improve. So that can be something someone else does. And I would just ask them, well, can you just tell me in a few simple words, how did you do this? Uh, so you have a starting point and then just try to replicate it. And also accept that it's probably not going to look exactly the way someone else painted it. You don't have the muscle memory of this person and to have you have to practically build your own muscle memory and uh, your neurons are not exact copies of this person's neurons. So you're always going to have your idiosyncrasies in your painting and it's going to look slightly different. And that's fine, right? Don't We don't want to be just copies. It's fine if this has your own style attached to it. Do you suggest spending more time painting very well one miniature after the other or paint a lot of miniatures with specific simple goals to reach before trying new techniques or getting better? Yeah, that's exactly what I just said, right? So uh, try to get a miniature to where you can practice something new, practice it and then tackle the next one. And then take a few of them where you can combine a lot of these steps that you learned. What do you think differentiates a decent paint shop from a great one? Um, so I think a decent paint shop can be, let's take the heavy metal style, for example, right? That's going to be a really clear style. Um, it's going to be pleasing, going to look nice on the table in front of you when you pick it up. But it's not really, is it really speaking to you? I would say it's a really nicely crafted miniature. But um, to take a miniature a step further, I think you have to do something that invokes something that's interesting for the viewer. So make the viewer want to pick up your miniature and look at it and say, wow, okay, what's going on here? How did you do this? Um, this is not really easy to do, but this is what you have to do, in my opinion, to go from a decent paint shop to a great paint shop. And different people have found different approaches for this. If you just look through Putty and Paint and pick the top 50, all of these painters have found their way of invoking interest in the viewer and yeah, making these miniatures <laughs> look awesome. And a lot of the time you can put your finger on it but sometimes you can't. And so it's not easy to say how to get there, but I feel like that's exactly what you need to do. Do you consider airbrushes worthwhile? Absolutely. I think it's another thing in your toolbox um, that can help you. You don't necessarily need it if you don't want to, but if you have it, like I said, it can open new ways and it's absolutely worthwhile. I'd like to ask you about advice regarding sculpting details for kit bashing. Uh, would you use green stuff? So I would not use green stuff for two reasons. It doesn't hold detail all that well and you can really sand sharp edges. I would try to find a putty that's self-curing, but that you can sand and um, when you press a needle in, it holds really sharp detail and you can also sandpaper it so that you can do like smooth armors and sharp armor edges. Do you find the competition getting harder now with all these YouTubers and their painting shows? How about just the general quality of minis you see at the game store? Is there an increase in quality that you've noticed since YouTube exploded? YouTube since 2010, I think has improved um, the general painting level a lot because the tutorials are now <laughs> in video where when I started, all you kind of had were photos and descriptions of what the people did. And I always say you learn the most from watching people paint. Of course, if they do it live in front of you and then you can ask them, what did you just do in that exact moment? That's the optimum. But being able to watch people paint and trying to understand it is already a big step up from just reading and looking at pictures. So this has improved the general standard 100%. The competition scene, I would say, improved a lot because of 
Um, people always trying to push themselves and those people are not necessarily on YouTube. So I think, like I said, with my own painting, there is a bit of a growing gap um, from the very top painters to the rest. And I'm not sure if that's going to close because of it, because those painters are not on YouTube. And the only way that you can see them painting is going to one of their workshops, for example. So I would say that's uh, a gap that YouTube can fill. Okay, so the next batch of questions is, yeah, professional questions. Um, what am I doing with the channel? If you were to suddenly find out that your health was declining or some other life-changing event, would you still try and stay in the miniature hobby? Yeah, I would 100% uh, try to keep painting because, yeah, I could do it like 12 hours a day and still be happy with it. Um, I would miss it a lot. Like I had a um, surgery four surgeries on my knee and I couldn't really do sports anymore and that was a big hit uh, I can do certain sports now so I'm fine but um, it I was sad when I couldn't do that anymore I don't want to know how sad I would be if I couldn't do miniatures anymore given enough growth what do you expect your channel to look like in the future I'm expecting my channel to be the same <laughs> Like it, it's, uh, it has been during the last few months. So there was definitely a time when I did not know anything about YouTube and I was just trying to put out videos. So I don't expect my channel to change a lot. Uh, in the beginning, I had a, a phase where I just did really abysmal videos. <laughs> Quality wasn't good, sound wasn't good, but I'm trying to improve that now and I try to make better videos. So I can always learn something new. So the production quality should get better. Other than that, I'll still try to make educational videos. I'll just try to ramp up the engagement a lot. And um, I don't know yet how to do that, but uh, yeah, we will see. There's still room for improvement in that regard. Uh, do you expect your teaching style to change as the audience grows? It's a bit of, of a reverse thing. I would have to change my approach to videos drastically to get more views uh, and then continue that to get even more views or to satisfy that audience that I would build through that. And I don't expect that to happen. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep the channel educational uh, and not necessarily focused on entertainment. What has been the worst issue you had to deal with in this hobby? I got to say I mostly had pleasant experiences with uh, the painting hobby. Like I said, the period where I was just hunting for golden demons wasn't necessarily a good time in my life but that was really self-imposed i uh yeah made painting miserable for myself but i think it was a good learning experience regardless because once i identified what the problem was and why i was unhappy um i was able to cut that part out of the hobby as a whole and then just do the things that made me happy so i guess i'm really lucky and not having had any bad experiences what's your main goal for 2000 21 and are you looking forward to traveling again to shows like Adepticon? <laughs> yeah, so I always wanted to go to Adepticon. It always has been a bit of a money issue since I have to fly over there and you can't really work there if you are not a US citizen. It's really complicated in that regard. If I would be able to do workshops there or yeah, hold classes, to compensate, that would be great, but I don't think you can do that. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to workshops again, wherever I can do them. And that's actually my goal for the next few months. Uh, hopefully it's going to happen. I'm not super positive it will, but the channel is growing. I'm happy about that. And now everything just has to open up again. And I just really want to get out there and meet a lot of you folk uh, in uh, workshops and shows. That's what I hope will happen hopefully again this year or next. What's the one thing you will never do for the channel? This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Any plans on the future of your sculpt? Yeah, I want to do a channel miniature. I, I have already talked about it. It's going to be a robot, a free-eyed robot to keep with the channel theme. But yeah, if you have any suggestions on posing or setting or whatever, I'm still open to changing my idea of what it's going to be. I'm curious about your sculpting business. I would love to hear about your opinion between hand sculpting and digital sculpting. To me, it seems like digital sculpts are too perfect and sometimes don't look as realistic. What do you think? Will the future only be in digital sculpts? 
I think uh, digital scalps will take over a massive amount of the market simply because you can do a lot more stuff with it. It's easier to, to do like a hand in 3D if you want to do a hand that's looking like this. A traditional scalp thing in a really small scale, you need an armature to put the clay on. It's, it's really difficult. So those things are easier. And um, of course, 3D printing, you can just send the file to someone else and uh, he can print it. So a lot of the steps are easier. That said, I agree with hand sculpted miniatures having their own charm. I don't necessarily think you can replicate that yet with 3D sculpting. Will you ever be able to do so? Maybe, maybe, but I don't expect 3D sculpting to get there, replicating that charm anytime soon. So I think there's always going to be room for hand sculpted stuff. But digital, um, if you want to learn sculpting, definitely try to do it in digital because there's a lot more opportunities. Which video are you the happiest with? Also, I like my ever chosen video the most. I could have probably edited down the award ceremony drastically, but I like the, the build up, you know, going to the show and then being at the show and everything that happened. And uh, yeah, the award ceremony and then my closing thoughts. I really like that video. It only got like 5,000 views, so no one saw it. But that video was really made in a way that I wanted to make it. And then as far as the most successful videos goes, I think I like my Necron video because it's, it's a tutorial that's conclusive from start to finish. And it also reached a lot of people and that's what I like to do with the channel. So I think those two videos are probably my favorite ones. What about teaching provides you with the greatest sense of satisfaction? So I can compare teaching at school with teaching miniature painting and miniature painting has a bit of a leg up because it's people that come to you and that really want to learn from you. While at school, that's not always the case. At school, you have to be extra engaging and super excited to um, maybe reach a half of the people, right? Or maybe two thirds of the students. In school, it was always nice to reach the people that were hard to crack. And what else was interesting was when a class derailed, when you were trying to teach something, but something else came up and then they were super interested in a topic. I always followed that rabbit hole. Could have been something completely unrelated. But um, when a class was engaged and was talking and was interested, yeah, that's always the most satisfying thing. And I think with teaching miniature painting, it's always satisfying because you always have people that really enjoy what you can give them and they soak it up and they ask questions and they're engaged. And that's really my, uh, yeah, that's my, to me, that's the most satisfying thing, being able to give people something that they want to learn. So that's it. That's all the questions you had. I don't know if you liked this. If you did, let me know in the comments and then maybe I can do a round two, maybe at 100,000 <laughs> subscribers in four months. But yeah, check out the links in the description of the video. If you want to support me, it's all there. Follow me on Instagram, blah, 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 whatever. I don't want to keep you any longer. Thanks a lot for watching and thanks a lot if you watched until this point. Thanks to everyone who was asking questions. I really appreciate it. So keep pushing that pigment. Don't be afraid. It's only paint and I'll see you in the next one.